But here's another way of getting ozone into the system, especially for the head and neck, particularly the bronchial tree and the lungs but from there into the entire rest of the body yeah. as well. And uh, the easiest way for us to do that is to inhale what we call ozonides. Uh, whereas, let me be very clear, we're not inhaling ozone. You don't want to do that and you will only do that once. <laughs> You're not going to do that again. Yeah. So what we're going to do is here is very simple. We're going to bubble ozone, gas, and oxygen, but again, this time through oil, and organic oil, like olive oil, rather than water. And how much would you fill it up? How, how important is it? It's that? not critical. I would fill it enough to be sure the stone is covered. Just enough? That's all, for a couple different reasons. I never understand. Let me just go in between. Why do they make those containers wide in the bottom and small up on top? They should be actually It makes You are absolutely right down. when you're talking about water. Because yeah. the longer the traverse, yeah. the more rapid uh, ozone is going to be absorbed in the water. But as in, when it comes to oil, it's an entirely different situation because the oil is so reactive with the ozone, after a millimeter of travel of that bubble coming out of the diffuser stone, there is no ozone left. But if the stone isn't covered, what are you going to be getting out yeah. here? You're yeah. going to be getting ozone so raw. So you knock it or... Yeah, so you, you must be very particular about this. So just enough ozone, oil to cover the stone is all we really need. Mm -hmm. Another reason not to use too much oil is when you start out, you are looking to be generating ozonides to inhale. That is the reaction products of ozone with the oil, the substrate mm -hmm. oil. And if you put a ton of oil in there, the concentration of ozonides able to come out the top to be inhaled is very low. So the less oil you've got, the more ozonides you're going to be able to generate. And I would say, when you first do this, if you're starting with fresh oil here, you really can kick start things by taking a little bit of ozone oil, <clears throat> which is pretty much straight ozonides, and yeah. putting a small amount of that right in here because this is concentrated ozonides and that will mix with the organic substrate oil, so you start at a higher level of ozonides in there to begin with. Ah, okay. And as you go, you will see that you are actually making ozone oil. Yeah. Because that's you're bubbling you ozone, ozone through oil. the oil. And as time goes on, you're, you're going to find that it gets more and more viscous, and you start to get more bubbling. So you keep the oil in it for several uses? I would say it usually at least is a week and we use it quite consistently. So by the end of the week, it's getting so viscous, you're starting to get bubbling. If you get enough bubbling, it comes out here and goes up your nose. Yeah. That's a mess. The other thing is you need to be very careful about this being knocked over yeah. because then the oil will be driven out here into your nasal cannula, all over your shirt, all over the counter, and you may be getting ozone gas directly out of that at that yeah. point, so that's not good. So I would recommend mounting this in something like a plaster base so it absolutely can't tilt over. Yeah. Now, the other concern is, is the ozone flow rate. Yeah. Because in dentistry, most of the time, we're looking for a very high concentration of ozone to penetrate a tooth. We don't have a very high flow rate because the higher the flow rate, the less time the oxygen stays in the reactive cell mm -hmm. inside the generator. And the shorter time you're there, the less ozone you make. Yeah. So we go for a very slow flow rate, like one thirty-second liter per minute, coming off of a pediatric regulator. But the, while the concentration is very high, the actual amount of ozone that you're getting out of that is not it's very, very high. Yeah. So <clears throat> when we're making ozonides to inhale, it's just the opposite. We're going to turn up the flow rate, turn our generator up to max, turn up the flow rate to maybe one half or even three quarters or one liter per minute. The concentration in fact goes down. Yeah, it's a very thin The concentration goes down, but the number of grams per minute or per hour of ozone that you're generating goes up. Goes up yeah. And that's the key to getting ozonides out of here. What does somebody inhale normally? Four to eight liters per minute. Yeah. So. We have them breathing through a nasal cannula, so a higher flow rate makes a lot more sense there too. So it's yeah. not all diluted by the air they're breathing in by the cannula. Okay. So you have to remember you're going for high flow rate because you want more ozone molecules coming into your flask to begin with. Okay. It's just the opposite from what we're doing on a given tooth. 
And uh, then the patient will take the cannula home with them and bring it back in a baggie for the next visit where they got to get charged again. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Okay. And what do you do with the oil when it gets thick? So when it gets thick, you have made ozonated oil and it has therapeutic properties, for instance, for cuts and burns and lesions and whatnot, even potentially for maybe periodontal application where you can inject it down around the teeth with a syringe. But what is the concentration? We really don't know. Yeah. So I probably would relegate that to home use, <laughs> cuts, burns, and whatnot. Yeah. Maybe put it in your ears if you have an ear infection, up your nose if you're working on a cold, sinus infection, that sort of thing. Probably wouldn't use it in the office. Yeah. And most of these oils that you get are of varying consistencies. This one happens to be a little bit less stiff. Yeah. Some come out almost like chapstick. Yeah, yeah. Pomade. And you, it's difficult to put those in a syringe in order to inject them around the teeth. Yeah. So there they have to be diluted with some of the base oil to make them less viscous in order to be more useful. Or they need to be warmed slightly yeah. in order to make them more flowable. Don't they lose? You have the to really warm, yes, if you overheat an oil, but you really have to overheat it significantly, way past what you'd be comfortable with. Mm -hmm. Uh, like putting them in a real hot car for a while before you start oh, to really hot, not, yes not room temperature no 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 you room know sometimes my office is like a real hot car <laughs> you know? well if it's hot <laughs> enough maybe you're starting to take a hit on the ozonize but yeah. we we will normally keep our uh, ozone in oils the in the refrigerator or even the freezer anyhow but I like the idea of putting some in in the beginning, which means you get that speeds up the process therapeutic effect. Yeah, it's and going to it be helps faster. with ozonating the oil. Mm -hmm. So the oils are very useful, and in fact, the oil you make here, you probably could use cleaning your teeth with uh, yeah. every day. I never thought about my teeth when I thought about the oil. Mm. It's a very strange Well, it awkward. doesn't taste real great, <laughs> and so well, one of the things we have to counsel people with uh, using the oil is to use it very sparingly. The least little bit, just a sheen of it, is plenty. Yeah. And uh, when you do it that way, it has kind of a nutty taste. It's not really nasty. One slick, one flick of the tool through that oil is enough to do the entire arch of the teeth. Oh. Okay. All at one time. Okay. A little so bit. It's not if, like I imagine. You do not want a ton of it. There's no need for it, yeah. and then it starts to taste bad, and then people stop complying. Yeah, that's a problem. 